After six preliminary rounds in Victoria's qualification for the Australia Cup, here we are, round seven, do or die. Hanneberg United, the historic club at Olympic Village, take on St Albans, who will be seeking their first final round's berth in over eight years. Live and free on the Football Victoria Facebook pages, MPL.TV and more. It is a monumental clash this evening. And the second time these two sides are meeting, in a matter 
of a week. These two sides meeting on Friday evening with the home side winning 3-0. Heidelberg United, they last secured a national rounds berth last year when they lost to the Brisbane Roar at home in front of a raucous crowd here at Olympic Village. Not quite the size of crowd today, but it is certainly building up here. I'm joined by Alex Sivkorovsky in commentary. Alex, it is a great night for cup football, and it's really reaching the climax, and it certainly feels like that as well. Yes, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Neil. Uh, what a moment this is. Moving on to the national stage, a win here could really boost your confidence as a club, especially these two clubs at the moment, not traveling too well in the league, St. Albans especially, but this is a huge moment, as you said. But this is where all the talking is done. All the coaches' advice has been given. Now it's up to players to bring the action here. And like you said, good crowd in for a Tuesday night. Plenty of uh, seats just available to our right. But big, big game for these two teams. And as you said, they just played on Friday. A big victory for uh, Heidelberg there. And uh, I guess, do the honours, take us through the lineups. Yep, we'll go through the lineups now. In for Heidelberg, in goals is 63, Nicholas Eris. Sunsuki Murakami, Aiden Fedahajik, Kenny Athu, Adrian Zara as the captain, Dominic Fala, Theon Nicolaitis, Kane Shepard, Joshua Pin, Anthony Theodoropoulos, Bilal Habib coming to the lineup tonight for George Katsakis. And for St. Albans, well, Gabriel Matti retains his spot in goals. It's two is Zach Thomas, three Christopher Tibb, five Sean Timmons, seven Moad Zwed, ten Zelfi Nazari, eleven Joseph Monet. 13, Joseph Kalina. 16, the captain is Michael Grigic. And 17 is Daniel Fabrizio. And 18, Lathan Dunn. So, not too many changes there, Neil, from Friday night. It'll be interesting to see how the players pull up a couple of days ago. Absolutely. With Kenny Athiyu and Belal Habib, big additions for the Burgers. Anthony Lesiotis dropping out of the matchday squad entirely. That is a big miss for the home side. He was excellent on the weekend. And was very crucial in getting a fair few interceptions on the ball as well. But all the talk has been done. Here and now, Adam Babka, our main referee assistants, Astero Sakalas and Stephen Toff with the fourth official, Puya Garidiran. Heidelberg in their famous yellow, kicking from left to right of your screen. St. Albans in their white from right to left. As we get underway, as Zara clips it out to the left hand side. Off the ball at the top, looking for the path of Athiu, but it's well shielded by Gurgic. And subsequently headed on by Daniel Fabrizio, and it'll be a throw in for Heidelberg just across halfway. Or just behind, in fact. Let's throw down the line, and it's again out of play. The Burgers will take the throw in. Bit of a nervy start here from. Uh St. Albans. Uh, it's interesting to see how they cope. As you mentioned, you're nine years since they last played. Ryan McGuffey was the goal scorer then, and now he's uh, leading him in charge tonight. So interesting if you can pass on any wisdom for him tonight as uh, Dinamo push forward now. And Fallow was just pushed down by Joseph Colina. Of course, switch across from Melbourne Knights. Last season, only 19 years old, might, might add. Very young player and his ambitions. Ball player to the right-hand side. Murakami un unable to intercept. An attempted ball down the line again from Dinamo, from Lathan Dunn. It's really been... Unable to gain a solid position in that starting lineup for St. Albans. 12 appearances off the bench in the MPL this season, but a very crucial start for the former Port Melbourne man this evening. And now to Shepard. Able to muscle his way through. Pass done. Now it's rolled in short to Zara. Gurgic arriving for support. Now Colina in possession. A strong sliding challenge did arrive from the Burgers midfield. And that's picked up by Nazari. And now to Lathan Dunn. He searches to the right-hand side and leaves a fantastic path for Joseph Kalina, although Erez might get there first, and he does so. And we'll play it out for a throw-in. 
Yeah, that was good ball in. Uh, unable to get on the end of it, but smart play there from Nicholas Harris. Uh, just coming up, made sure of that one. So it looks like Hoddleberg are going to have to be on their toes in defence, Neil. Uh, no George Ott for St Albans, so they might have be playing those through balls and trying to catch the off offside trap. Interesting to see how Hoddleberg cope. Of course, as we mentioned, no George Ott this evening as well. Five goals in the league this campaign. Had a stunning start to the campaign. Has really sort of to tail off as the season has progressed. Shepard wraps after his right-hand side for Fabib getting the first touch. And neatly finding Murakami. He's got space to work in on this right-hand channel. Gets a crossaway into the area. Kenny Yathieu was there. But it just drifted away from King Kenny, as I like to call him, <laughs> in these parts. Yeah, that was a good ball in for Murakami there. It was a very slippery pitch at the moment. Did rain before. And King Kenny, as he's known around this circle as well, he scored in the big games, and that was uh, very close. So look for Murakami to be overlapping uh, today. It'll be interesting to see if he can sustain that over the full 90 minutes. But Hardich playing it back to Errors, who gets it clear and long. Of course, many goalkeepers have played for Heidelberg United in the league and cup this season. Hayden Brown, Errors, and also Chris Theodorides, who's made a switch back to FC Clifton Hill in the State Leagues, who will be in action next week in the final round, would you believe it, against Northcote City as a foul is called against Heidelberg United on the, this near side. Well, wouldn't that be a cup story if uh, Clifton Neal somehow managed to get through to the next round and they draw Heidelberg? As St. Orban's now trying to get into the rhythm of things at the moment, unable to get in control of the ball, just finding conditions difficult at the moment. And Heidelberg will be happy with this. They're controlling the tempo of the game. Just about making those crucial chances count. Now to Theodoropoulos playing in a deeper role this evening. Johnny Apostolopoulos was Aiden Fedahadij's partner in defence on Friday night. Matthew, excellent body positioning from the South Sudanese international and he gets the free kick it's a very dangerous free kick for Heidelberg early on you'd expect Kane Shepard to be on this set piece very tough to go direct from here Alex but what would be the I guess ambition from this uh, position I think uh, get the ball to bounce just uh, just be outside a six yard box there and really make it skid so it makes it difficult for Mati to make a save because he's got to time it and depending how the ball spins, I think it'll be difficult. But you've got to go for it. As you can see now, a chance for Heidelberg. St. Albans deep, four in the wall. So it'll be interesting to see how they cope. It'll be Adrian Zara on his right foot, flipping it towards the back post. It's Athi who was there. But a fact, it was a offside flag against Heidelberg United. So Ryan McGuffey's men given a slight reprieve and you did mention that Ryan McGuffey was the goal scorer uh, last time uh, these two well last time St Albans made the national rounds of the Australia Cup they defeated Parramatta Melita away from home and then faced the Perth Glory in a 4-1 loss at Melbourne Knights Stadium in front of 3,500 people you'd think if Dinamo get through that there might be that groundswell of support from the Croatian community of course, Melbourne Knights are still in the cup. Let, let, let's, let's keep that in mind. Yes. Uh, also, uh, Canberra Club as well. Also, a Croatian club uh, into the next round. So, could have a Croatian derby in the uh, next round, which will be interesting to see. Sydney United as well are in the mix. Additionally, it's Athew. Might see a par three. King Kenny. Can he do it? He can! King Kenny's on the board for Heidelberg United. Deja vu almost. A big player scoring big goals. He did it against Perth Glory all those years ago. And he does it yet again, this time against St. Albans. Yeah, it was a lovely ball over the top. And Kenny had the right position, putting the defender on his left-hand side. Time to bounce. Not much Marty could do there. Put his foot through it. And a great start here for Heidelberg. And that's what George Kasakis was want. He want that early goal calm the nerves and put the pressure back on Dinamo now and open up the game a little bit more. But that was a good finish there from King Kenny. And that's why the crowd are, got a rousheous applause for that one. Great goal. 
his second goal in less than two weeks, scored against Hume City a couple of weeks back. He's really beginning to find his shooting boots. And dare I say, the Twin Towers, as I'll call them, Kane Shepherd and Kenny Athew, are certainly delivering for the home side. Big body challenge from Dion Nicolaitis on Joseph Kalina. Be interesting to see how Dinamo adapt the bigger ground, uh, what they're usually used to at Churchill Reserve. They did play on Friday, so they know what's capable of, but well, that was a big foul throw there. And referee hasn't even called it back, so they got away with that one now. They try to push forward here. There's ball out wide. Joey Manek looks for the line and just the defense of Heidelberg, they're just fighting Neil every single bit of position. They're not allowing Dinamo to get even a sniff of the ball. Matthew imposing himself physically yet again. Manages to get the touch away to Zara. Might see a path for Bilal Habib. He is on side, according to the assistant. He gets a strike away towards the near post with Gabriel Marti. Standing strong and managing to catch that. Well, the confidence is up for Heidelberg. You can see there's a chance there from Bilal Habib. Not afraid to shoot. Did take a slight defection. It might have taken the speed off it. But uh, Heidelberg are up and about. And the Burgers fans are definitely in full voice. Now to old central for Aiden Fedahadic. Of course, formerly of... Heidelberg's greatest rivals in South Melbourne. It's nice interplay with Habib, but couldn't quite get the pass off to find Murakami. But St. Albans have really struggled to get the ball in their attacking half. It'll be interesting to see uh, what their game plan will be. As we said, no George Ott. Uh, the, their enforcer in Troy Ruthen's out as well, so... They need someone to step up, and Zelfi Nazari has, got to, has to be that player. And Moad's where two midfielders that really need to go. There's a lovely bit of run here. Shepard getting held, comes out. Kenny, he's got his eyes set in goals, twisting, turning. Kenny, three defenders around. But here goes for the back post. And kept in. And I'll get a corner, so... Holderberg New are really pushing for that second goal here, and they really want to kill off the game early. That's just vintage Kenny Athew there. <laughs> if you don't know about Kenny Athew's career, it is one of the most outstanding ones in Australian football. Of course, formerly of South Springvale, Box Hill United, South uh, also Springvale White Eagles as well. He played at the Essendon Royals last year. He's played overseas in Asia. He's done it all, Kenny Athew, and he's back scoring, which is wonderful to see. towards the back post, might have yet fall, it doesn't, it's chest it down, attempted and it hits the crossbar by Josh Penn and the secondary strike from Shepard. It is all Heidelberg United in these opening 15 minutes. Well, as you can hear the Alexandros chant going around, the crowd are really excited about this one, two great chances there, coming off the post, and uh, Dinamo really need to tighten up that defence, otherwise this could be another big loss for them. Neil, they've conceded almost 21 goals in the last three games, and Ryan McGuffey really needs to get that defence in line as they go forward again now. It's Habib. Turning away past his marker, looking for the darting run of Murakami. And he can miss the foul, does Habib. Mainly used to off the bench roles this campaign, Bilal Habib, but you're very intrigued to see how he fits within this system under George Katsakis. Yeah, especially given the Heidelbergs, uh, the position they're at, you know, might as well throw Kenny up there and see what he can do. He's delivered over the last couple games, and, uh, you know, they're just sitting outside the, the top six. And a couple of weeks ago, you would think they weren't going to be even close to the top six as they push forward again now. Crowd waiting in to shoot, and good defensive work there from St. Albans. Well, referees uh, call it a goal kick, Neil. Not sure what happened there. Interesting call. 
We have the advent of the replay, and it, it does seem as so that it did come off a Heidelberg United player, judging from our angle. But we'll look on the replay just to, to have a look, <laughs> just to make sure. But I must say, Alex, it is such a great sign to see the juniors out. Uh, for Heidelberg United uh, this evening. A lot of the juniors are up on the hill, as you can see on the far side. Uh, really great to see Heidelberg United encompassing everyone in their community to, to, to come to these big games. And this is what it means, really. We, midweek football get, gets an opportunity for the youngsters to come out and see the seniors play. And this is what some of them are going to look forward to, playing for Heidelberg United one day. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a big couple of weeks for Heidelberg. As you mentioned, they did play Friday night at Albans. They had the 65th uh, anniversary on Saturday night. That was a big occasion for the club. You know, that's why they're called the People's Club. The, the community gets behind them. You can see the juniors are still here. I mean, it's pa probably past their bedtime and still kicking the ball around. It's got stories to tell tomorrow. And it's a big couple of weeks for Heidelberg. They got Oakley this Friday. Following week, they got South Melbourne. So two big Greek derbies and George Kasakis, if someone's, uh, you know, like you mentioned, Neil, always under the pump, but somehow, some way he finds a result, he grinds it out, and this could be a big couple of weeks for him, and they could really get their season back on track. For St. Albans, it hasn't been all too pretty for them whatsoever. They've had a couple of very poor losses, but they need to really get themselves some momentum going forward, otherwise it could be another very horrid night for them at the village. Now down to this left-hand side, the cross coming in again from Heidelberg United, but yet again, it's another corner on the far side. A relentless pursuit from George Katsakis's men. You can tell that they have this extra vigor and really motivation to prove a point and get themselves into the national rounds yet again. And the set piece will arrive from Adrian Zara, the goal scorer last week. Just towards the central area, and it's Marty who gets his hands to it very effectively. Yeah, Marty's been uh, come at a tough time. As Karuth's shot comes in there, it's a bit audacious, but uh, nevertheless, uh, they got away with it. Uh, he's come in in a really tough time when uh, they were conceding a lot of goals. Karanovic uh, being sent off, form-wise, and uh, at their best. I mean, it's been a while since they last had a win against, I think it was Green Gully, a 1-0 tight win there. So he's doing a job, but uh, he needs his defence uh, to also help him out. Now it's Habib, rolls it back to Murakami. Has it back to Habib, who's slid down on the deck. Deemed to be a foul called against St. Albans, and it will be Heidelberg United with the free kick on a very, I'd say, obtuse angle or acute. I'd say probably more more acute, and you expect it will come on the right foot. It looks to be Anthony Theodoropoulos. You have Tall Timber, you've got Kenny Athey, you've got Kane Shepard, Aiden Fedahadic as well. This presents an opportunity to put one hand into the pot as the balls will be drawn for the Australia Cup for round of 32 in a few months. In fact, it will be Dion Nicolaitis to swing this in on his left foot. A bit unorthodox, but nonetheless, we'll see what happens from this set piece. Looping, but it's Marty who's forced the punch away. Nicolaitis receives again, gets the first touch away. Options to his right. Azaro manages to keep it in play. He gets the cross away and into the middle, but it's Marty. Again, strong hands. Body himself past Kenny Athew and Kane Shepard. Not an easy task. Yeah, given that, as you mentioned, the tw tall timbers there, that was a really good goalkeeping. Great cross again from Adrian Zara. They are really bombarding St. Albans' defence at the moment, and you've just got to feel how long before that wall just actually just breaks and they're unable to contain him. And at this rate... Uh, you know, it's not looking good, but what do you do, Neil? You've got a big, big couple of weeks coming up. You don't want any more injuries. We know Heidelberg have had quite a few. You've got a hot, red-hot Oakley, and you've got a red-hot South Melbourne after that. Do you sort of keep it at 1-0 or 2-0, or do you really go for attack and uh, push real hard? It's a good question you pose. I mean, I'm no football coach, <laughs> but I would propose a scenario in which you can – I guess finish the game as early as you possibly can by way of a scoreline and ensure that you suffocate St. Albans of all their energy going forward. And I think they're doing a very good job of that thus far. But St. Albans, a goal would certainly be scored against the run of play as things currently stand. 
And yes, it's also about conserving energy going into the coming weeks. Sullivan's out. They'll get a free kick. And really, it's stop-start football from them at the moment. They just aren't able to get their rhythm or some passing possessions going as Dib goes out wide. And just turning it over too easily and allows Heidelberg to just really get the ball and uh, get back into the game and go in attack. So something's got to change, whether they change structurally. Uh, they're used to playing 4-4-2, whereas uh, Heidelberg play the 4-3-3. So maybe uh, a change in the midfield and get some more legs in the middle to help out. Uh, time will tell. Now it's on this right-hand side for Dinamo. Now it's Webb, weaving its way through, rolls it into a central area, although that pass is picked off by Heidelberg United, one back by St. Albans in Heidelberg's half. He's rolled into the centre circle for Sean Timmons. Storied career, Sean Timmons, the Irishman. Now Murakami, under pressure. Ooh from Lathan Dunn, and it's picked off by Stinamo, and the cross, what should I say, the, the shot did arrive from Daniel Fabrizio, but Nick Garris made himself look big. Yeah, that was a, a bad pass there, and uh, Fabrizio just couldn't get the height he wanted, but uh, first, that's Sir Robin's first real chance, we've almost played 22 minutes of football, and that's the first time that Errors has been really under the pump, so Sir Robin needed a lot more of that. Daniel Fabrizio, a long and storied career across Queensland and New South Wales. The cross comes in towards the near post. Batted away by the Burgers. They might look to strike yet again. And now it's into a central area. Monarch. A long ball over the top. And Heidelberg standing firm in a defensive setting. And Athew just bats that clear. And he might have hit it right into the path of Kenny Athew. What should I say? Kane Shepard. Who gets a strike away! Just drifts wide, but still a sign of applause from the home fans in attendance. Well, that was a great ball there from King Kenny and Kane Shepard just pushing that one wide. But you could just see St. Albans, as soon as they go forward, they're rushing back and making life so easy for Heidelberg at the moment. And King Kenny, well, as the name sits, he's really has this game in clubs of his hands. And you can just see he's got, it's his, maybe his breakaway game, but he really shows us his full potential and bring out the best of him. But Sir Robbins just cannot contain him, Neil. They can't even close him down. You can see two, three players always around him, and he still somehow manages to get through. Matthew chests it down. It's played out by Gurgic. Now it's Nazari. Dib. Of course, the former Heidelberg United player, Christopher Dib. I'm sure he's not looking forward to going down two games in a row to his former side, but St. Albans have had some positive flurries in the last few minutes. All is not lost in this Australia Cup. Round seven preliminary tie, entering the 22nd minute. In the other game, Neil, it's uh, Neil All, Golden Valley Suns and Hume City. That's a uh, very similar time from us, so Golden Valley, MPL 2-3 side, doing quite well. Shepard rolls out to the left-hand side. The strike on goal is fairly tame. It was towards the top right corner. Been able to find its target. You did mention that that game tonight being played in Shepparton, so a bit of a drive <laughs> for those in Broadmeadows. And it's been a really good season for Golden Valley thus far. Currently sitting third, I believe, in the MPL 3. 
And what a story it would be for them to, to make the national rounds. A club famous for developing talent as well. I'm not sure if you've heard of the Qual Boys, but... <laughs> Mowad's red there, not happy with the treatment he's receiving, just almost lashing out, and referees uh, saved the day by blowing the whistle. Timmons now, now to Dib. Dib goes a long route again. And they've done that quite a few times, Neil, so Heidelberg will know that ball's coming in over the top, and they'll get to it first, so they've got to change that game plan up a little bit. St. Albans having a spell in possession. Ryan McGuffey will be very pleased with his last few minutes of play. Of course, arriving this season from Nursley Cannons, where he was the assistant coach under Chris Taylor. Of course, we have to remember he was a former player of St. Albans and a great one at that, finishing up in 2019. Hits the head of Zwed and it'll be another Heidelberg throw in just inside of their half. Murakami now looking for options. Ken Kenny the main target. And you can see him just doesn't look as a biggest bloke on the field but uses his size to his advantage. You can just see he's got very good upper body strength. He's able to turn so quick as Murakami again. Bala off of the short one, ignored him. Handball by Timmins. Play on is a call here. They switch it out wide, Heidelberg now. Trying to spread Sraubens thin now. Cross to come in. Good defending there by Dinamore now. They put themselves under the pump and you can just see Neil Heidelberg, as soon as they turn it over, they want to get it back again and not allow Dinamore to play their game. This pressing style of play is proving very fruitful for the home side. Of course, only that one goal arriving from Kenny Athew early on. That's what currently separates these sides as Gergic does well to turn past his marker. And it's went back by Heidelberg. Gergic does well on that far side and plays it down the line. Looking central. And Adam Babka points to a free kick for Dinamo in the midway point of their half. Gabriel Marti now takes it quickly, allows Dinamo to get it moving as a through ball into the middle and just taking a tumble there. And Heidelberg once again win it back in the middle. They switch it out wide again. Oh, lovely ball over the top. King Kenny waiting for it patiently in the middle. Happy to concede a bit of ground now. Heidelberg just trying to catch Sorbens out of position here. Better Hajik. Lovely ball into the box. Monaik heads it away. King Kenny brings it down. Habib. Murakami now whips in across. It's deep. And Sir Auburn's headed that one out for a corner. Really says a lot about the game state. Whenever the ball ends the box, Dinamo's instincts are to just bat it clear. Even if clear is, is the direction of a corner. And it will be another set piece. Goes short. Nicolades takes a deflection. It's in the area, but St. Albans briefly had possession. Now for Feta Hadic. Sends it into the area. And strong clearance. Now it's Dom Feller. We'll leave it, in fact, for Murakami. Murakami goes short ball down the line to Shepard. Back to Murakami now. 
Dinamore managed to win it back now. Dunn working hard through ball, but St. Albans get there back on. Almost cleared, but they get it back. Holderberg getting out. Waiting for that cross. St. Albans managed somehow to peg him back a little bit. Again, plays a 1-2, but run, not running on the end of it. And that's probably the first real mistake Holderberg have done all evening, Neil. I'm surprised the mistake didn't arrive from the flick from Kenny Athiu. Such confidence, and you can really blame him. He's really beginning to find his stride. It's more so what, what we are used to as uh, Victorian folk. But nonetheless, Gabriel Marti to take the resulting goal kick. Shepard looks over the top towards that left-hand side. But Marty forced a clear down that right-hand side and out of play. Certainly not the direction that he would have liked. Not too much wind this evening as well. So just a simple miss kick, it seems. Yeah, just the pressure from Heidelberg. Uh, you can see him running in, forcing that turnover again and allowing uh, Heidelberg to win the ball back. And I think that's the message that will be from George Kasakis is try to get the turnovers and put them away and put the game out of reach for St. Albans. And that way they can just uh, get the subs on and clear the game. There's a chance here for Dinamore. Oh, the lovely work here. They have the numbers back there. Better Hadjik just goes for safety. Daniel Fabrizio has got the hustle like you can never imagine. Edgeworth Eagles, Brisbane City, Manly United. Also, winner of the MPL New South Wales in 2019. So he's a serial winner, but can he do it in Victoria? It was lofted into the area. And subsequently cleared by Anthony Theodoropoulos. Nervy areas for Heidelberg United. And this is where St. maybe just need to keep that pressure on and keep the ball here in the attacking half. Ease the pressure off the defenders a little bit. Allow them to breathe and uh, really maybe sneak a goal in or two. They go off the long throw. And it'll be a goal kick. So nothing comes out of that one. All hope is not lost for St. Albans. No, Let's keep in mind all. that the score line is only 1-0. Yep. And they have looked encouraging going forward in, in the very few times in which they've done so. But it's going to take tactics tactical mastery from Ryan McGuffey to get a goal against the run of play. They've been somewhat close thus far, but it's to maintain that pressing energy uh, in those attacking phases. Ares gets close to the far side, flicked on again. A beat was a target. They go forward again, Heidelberg. And that'll be a free kick going Holderberg's way. Uh, another set play here for Heidelberg. They've come close. Will this be the moment they finally get one that clicks and they can get a goal? The uh, distance Neil is a bit, I should say, a bit too audacious, but hey, we've seen stranger things happen. Towards the right-hand side. Athiu with the header. And in fact, the last touch to come off a St. Albans player. And yet another corner. I'm not sure how many of those we've had thus far, but I'm sure it's creeping up to 10. Dion Nicolaitis to swing this in on his left foot. Towards the back post, but again, Marty making himself very strong. Yeah, Gabriel Marty now is uh, really did really well up in the air. Just that, as you said, that one goal. But other than that, Neil, uh, he's done quite well. As you can see, the corners four to one. So chance for Sorobas now through Timmins. 
Irons Dib trying to spread the ball out wide. They'll go ball over the top again. And just really got to be a bit more cleaner in possession. They go all the way back to Marty now. You can see it's Heidelberg, Neil, not even putting any pressure on. They know that the ball's going to get turned over again and they'll get it back and they can allow the forwards to go forward. It's a lovely ball down the line, Manet. They need him to be firing up that left-hand side. Good ball over the top. It's brought down. And it'll be a free kick in a very good position, Neil. This is probably the one chance that Sir Robins might have a crack at goal. A very neat turn. He was from Daniel Fabrizio, who's undoubtedly been St. Albans' best this season. Only the one goal in the NPL Victoria. But he's proving to be an incredible presence going forward. And Michael Gurgic and Zelf Zelfi Nazaria are standing over this. Gurgic, the set-piece specialist for St. Albans. And Zelfi Nazari, the Afghan international, is he able to deliver and get Dinamo a goal against the run of play? Or might it be Gurgic? It's the mind games on the set piece. It is Gurgic! It is fantastic from Michael Gurgic! What a response! Game on here at the village! Well, if there was ever a player that was going to step up, it was their captain. And that was a beautifully taken kick. Nick Eris, try as he might, couldn't get near it. But that is one spectacular kick. And as we said, a set piece that Sir Robins had to take advantage of. And it's the captain that's put it away. And it's one all nil. And as you said, it's a game on now. And this could really throw a spanner into Hodelberg's works. And now they're going to have to come out and attack again. They've had it quite easy. But that'll get St. Albans up and about, and their confidence will grow. They just can't concede early on now. Of course, Gurgic, two goals in his last four in the MPL Victoria. Add a crucial Australia Cup goal to that, and his season tally doesn't look that bad, of course. But it has been largely one-sided, with Heidelberg dominating proceedings thus far by by some stroke of luck or imagination or just tactical incisiveness. St. Albans have drawn level. Bit of a mix-up there with Dib and his keeper. And good work by King Kenny, hunting that one down. He wasn't happy with the treatment he received. And now the pressure's back on Heidelberg. He's since the home fans not happy there's a short ball in as Monet just goes for the distance hot ball at the moment flicked on by Fabrizio Heidelberg send it forward Shepard flicks it on it's a lovely ball over the top and getting in the way again Dinamo desperate defending and they get a corner out of that one and I might just say, I think Bilal Halbid has swapped wings with Josh Pinn, it seems. So, nothing too strange. We are certainly used to seeing wing swaps in the MPL Victoria and I guess football more broadly. But it's an interesting tactical adjustment from George Katsakis. Corner coming in. It's strong. It's towards the back post. Mati unable to get a fingertip to it. throw in right next to the byline and I think that they will utilize the Max Mikula special <laughs> well the long throw in they've all gone to the penalty spot so we know where the ball's gonna be aimed for and it'll be Josh Pinn to send this in His pin. Marty bats it clear. Might it fall? It doesn't. However, it'll be a goal kick. Yeah, it didn't come off that time, uh, but they'll definitely try that again. So, just another five minutes ago before half time, and 
St Albans can keep it at this scoreline. They'll be pretty happy with it after going down early. And uh, it'll be interesting. Oh. Plus stoppage time. It'll be interesting to see how they cope. So it'll be interesting. Ryan McGuffey uh, will definitely uh, get his charges up and about. George Kostaska, so he might be disappointed they conceded. Other than that, they've really been faultless. As Marty goes long. Heidelberg through Feta Hadjik, send it forward. Can he miss it? Habib overran it. Dinamore send it forward again. High looping ball. Feta Hadjik heads it down. Eventually cleared to safety. Still, it kept in. Grigic overran it. Shepard. They switch it out wide. So Heidelberg now really pushing for that second goal. Dinamore, desperate defending, they clear. And it'll be a throw in for Heidelberg. Well, Bilal Habib, a couple touches slightly wayward of him, but I must say, Chris Vadib and Michael Dugic, and I guess the whole of St. Albans' defence, have done very well, all things considering. Now it's Zara, looking for the feet of Athiyu, but he wasn't able to reach it. Now it's out to this left-hand side for Dinamo. Murakami. Ooh. And Athew has beaten the defence and has clipped it over the top, but it has not fallen in, but a penalty has penalty. been awarded by Adam Babkar. And King Kenny's work has proven extremely advantageous in the way of the home side. A glorious chance for Heidelberg United to put themselves in front yet again. Well, just having a look at that one, Neil, I couldn't see anything on the replay. But uh, that is a big, big call in a big, big moment of the game. You can see that Kenny went around. Oh, that's a... That is... Look, I don't usually disagree with the referees, but that time I'm going to have to disagree with them. That did not look like a penalty. But Heidelberg's luck now... They've got to make a count. I think is that is what you will call contentious. <laughs> we will see the fallout of that penalty call in just a few moments. But St. Albans, for all their fantastic defensive work, have conceded a penalty. It is Kane Shepard from the spot to potentially put the Burgers in front for the second time this evening. Gabriel Marti, can he make himself the hero this time out? A storied club on the precipice of another cup run. If they're able to slot this home, it is Kane Shepherd. Oh. It's saved by Marty. Unbelievable. This game is something special. And it's really befitting of the round seven Monica well, and a couple of afters as well. How do you is, do? It's opening up now, and Adam Babka's got to get this under control. And what a save that was from Marty. Well, that's maybe the luck that St. Albans needed. It's still going on here. And, uh, well, Neil, that was a big chance, as you said, for Heidelberg to go 2 on up at half time. And Heidelberg, well, they'll look back at it. Maybe that's a moment that could maybe seal their fate in this game. I think we'll see a mini conference between Adam Babcon <laughs> and his assistants, <laughs> Estera Sakalis and Stephen Toth. In another game, Neil Goldman Valley Suns 1 0 over Hume City. That's in the 43rd minute, so could that be a cup set on our hands here? I could not think of anything better this evening. You've got two <laughs> fantastic games of football, a potential cup set on your hands. You've got drama ensuing between Heidelberg United and St. Albans. As uh, Jose Mourinho said, this is football heritage. <laughs> well, something's gone down with Marty. He's gone down. And... It'll be interesting to see what comes out of it. The card has been given to Heidelberg. Couldn't see who it was, but well, the medic is 
taking his time coming off and a yellow card to St Albans as well so let's just hope Marty's okay as the medic finally comes out but what a moment Neil penalty yeah. you can see the sense online that not many people agreed with it and what a save that was from Marty Kane Shepard you would have thought would slot one away in the form that he's been of late but that could be the turning point of the game. Potentially so. Kane Shepard is generally quite the marksman. A goal on the weekend against this very side as the two sides have an opportunity to have a drink. But could this be the, the momentum switch, Alex? I mean, a penalty save does a lot for confidence. Yep. And Heidelberg potentially, as a result of that penalty miss very aggrieved in, in that sense and uh, eventing their frustrations almost in a physical manner you'd have to say <laughs> uh, um, but it's really telling the the internal sort of conflict that Harderberg faced do they press do they not press how do they address things going forward well if there's one coach you want to have uh, and that's uh, George Kasakis all these years experience here He's going to have to get the charges going at half time. He's going to have to give him some speech to go, this is your opportunity. You've got to take it. They're obviously looking at the national second division. We want to get to this national stage and we can't, you know, they've beasted all the 3-0 on the weekend and, you know, he knows what's at stake here. And it could be the, it could be the moment that drives their season forward or it could be a moment that puts their season in disarray as Marty gets us back underway. So there'll be a few added minutes of stoppage time here. And Heidelberg push on forward, King Kenny. Home fans really not happy. And it's going to free kick Heidelberg's way. So interesting to see what comes out of this one, Neil. Kane Shepard drawing the foul. Adrian Zara will stand over this yet again. It'll be an audacious effort from this angle, but they will lift loft it in. It's Gergic who gets the header forward. It's Fala. And now it's cleared away by St. Albans. As far as Adrian Zara, there were Heidelberg players offside. Immaculate touch from Fabrizio. Manchester to turn past his marker, and he could be away here for St. Albans. Now on this right-hand channel, it's Mardswed. Cutting it into the area. Ooh. It's Arias who has to come out and punch that clear. But a flailing leg might have hit Nick Arias right on the head. And there will be an injury concern for the Heidelberg goalkeeper. And the medic has been called. Well, this is yeah, all the drama. Look, it didn't look intentional from there, Neil. Uh, but let's just hope Nick Ayres is okay. You'd hate to see a keeper go down like that. And let's just hope it's nothing more than just a bit of a bump and nothing else. But uh, some, some <laughs> interesting end to this half, that's for sure. What will the decision be? With, will it can't be given? Well, who knows? Areas is still on the ground. For both players now. For both players as well. Talk about drama. <laughs> this game befitting of all those characteristics. Areas is still receiving treatment. We hope he's all okay. To continue. As is providing signs of movement nonetheless, which is which is positive. Yep. I think it was Joey Monarch who 
clipped Nick Erez. And we'll look to provide you updates in due course, but yeah, Nick Erez seems to be sitting down now, which is positive nonetheless. Yeah, let's just hope it's uh, just precautionary and they do the right checks in place. I hate to see keepers go down like that. But in the other game, you at just uh, half time. Golden Valley Suns won. Hume City nil. So they're 45 minutes away going into the national stage. This one here still haven't wrapped up at half time. There's uh, the medics just making sure Nick is okay. We hope that he is. Not the sight you want to see at a football pitch, that's for sure. Hayden Brown is there as a replacement goalkeeper. And you, you suspect that George Katsakis will go to his bench. Yeah, I think they're waving over to get the stretcher out. Yeah, this is not good. And yeah, Nick Arrows is, is clearly in, in some way. He's back on his feet, though, which is positive, all things considering. Looks to be okay for the time being. But our thoughts are with Nick Arrows, who has seemingly suffered a very big injury and yeah Hayden Brown has been prepared to come on has played games this season for Heidelberg United but nonetheless we will just about see the introduction of Heidelberg's backup goalkeeper for this evening and if you're George Katsakis this is not the substitution you'd like to make Nick Errors proving very strong in goals in recent weeks, has been a large, pivotal figure in the Burgers' surge up the table in recent weeks. Yeah, let's just hope it's uh, precautionary there. Nick is able to return to the field sooner rather than later. They have made the substitution. Hayden Brown will come on. And we've seen it in the Cup. Keepers coming on and... Making a name for themselves. Could this be the moment for Brown to really put his name in the lights and get his team over the line? Time will tell. But as you mentioned, Neil, let's just hope that Nick Ayers is all good. They just take him off for precautionary reasons. No card that's been given, so it's a, a referee deemed it to be a, cha a legal challenge and... Let's just hope that Nick is okay. That's our main concern for going forward. As now Hayden Brown to get us back underway here at Olympic Village. One all leading up to the halftime break. Big moment in the game. Uh, Alex, we've got a very big announcement. Ange Postacoglu, as of 50 minutes ago, has been officially appointed as Tottenham Hotspur head coach. We apologise that we didn't bring you this news earlier, but we're just both reacting to it now. This is outstanding, and we'll bring we'll bring more thoughts uh, <laughs> at halftime. But Monek to look to swing this in towards the area. Might it yet fall? It might. No, still, it's still in the penalty oh. area, bouncing around, but it manages to get clear of the Harderberg goal. Well, the worst kept secret in football has been uh, finally let out as Harderberg now under the pump in the last couple of minutes here at Olympic Village. They'll get another chance at a throw in. Well, Hayden Brown called upon early. And that'll be the halftime break here at Olympic Village. It is one all, thanks to goals from the one and only King Kenny. And for St Albans, the captain, Michael Grigic. It's been a, a probably an interruption to the end of the half there, not what we wanted to see. Let's hope Nick Ayres is all good. But, Neil, it's been a, a good good half for St. Albans. Probably not so good for Heidelberg. Yeah, absolutely. And it's been such a fantastic evening for football, not just in Victoria, but in the world entire for Australians. Of course, many clashes, of course, in New South Wales as well. You can catch those on NPL.TV as well. It is 1-1 here at the Village. Opening goal arriving from Kenny Athiu with Michael Gugic replying from a free kick. Also a penalty save for St. Albans through Gabriel Marti. We'll just, it's been unorthodox 
today, <laughs> uh, Alex. But we'll, we will just talk about Ange Postacoglu being appointed as as Spurs head coach. I know you're a Liverpool fan, if, I, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. I am. Obviously, you might feel a bit different towards the success, but it's a wonderful achievement for Australian football, and it's one I think that we must talk about, despite. Obviously, the Australia Cup action uh, currently uh, going on. Yeah, absolutely. It's probably one of the, the biggest stories in Australian football history that we have a coach that is playing in probably the best league in the world. What an opportunity. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's a flow and effect as we've seen other coaches. He, he went to Japan. We've seen Kevin Muscat um, and a few of other... Um, Ange Postacoglu is, uh, you know, second in charge, getting gigs um, in, ja- in other Japanese clubs. And this could be a really big opportunity for other coaches to, you know, look abroad and go, hey, maybe we need to go outside and, and you know, do it in those leagues that maybe weren't popular. Um, but that is just monumental for Australian football. And, look, I think everyone's going to have a favourite second team. It's going to be Tottenham, that's for sure. He's got a big job on his hand. Uh, his, first thing he's got to do is keep Harry, uh, Harry Kane. If he can keep him, that's a start. Then he's got to build a squad. Um, I think it's come at a right time for him. Reason being is they're not, pl- not playing Champions League football or European football at all. So he can just focus solely on the league. He can have a big cup run. You know, they've got two cups to play for. This is a big, big chance. And look, I think everyone will be watching Tottenham a lot more closer. Couldn't agree with you more, Alex. You, you've you've uh, made my thoughts uh, very clear as well. Uh, you, you've encapsulated my opinions, opinions as well. well. We'll be back with you for the second half in about 10 to 15 minutes.
Welcome back to the second half of the Australia Cup Round 7 preliminary round in Victoria. It is a titanic second half of both of these sides. Heidelberg United opening the scoring through Kenny Athiu. What a fantastic reply. It's an immaculate set piece. Michael Gurgic delivered on that occasion. Nick Erez has subsequently been replaced by Hayden Brown due to a, a significant head knock. And Gabriel Marti, the opposing goalkeeper, turned hero with a penalty save on Kane Shepard late in that first half as we kick off in the second half. Alex, your thoughts on how things will, will go on? I have the inkling that this will not be finished within the 90 minutes allocated. Well, uh, if you're a Heidelberg fan, you would want this to be finished as soon as possible. Get the three points, wrap up the players, move on to a Friday night's game, which is a big one against Oakley Cannons. If you're St. Albans, you want this to go as long as you can because they know they're in with a chance at a big, big result here. And it's going to be a big, big 45 minutes, as you said, Neil, and one to look out for. All eyes will be on this one. It's Wed with the attempted overhead kick, but it might fall again for the Burgers with the attempted volley. Now it's Gergic out to the left-hand channel. And Shepard might pick up in possession. He does so and finds his fellow striking partner in Kenny Athiu. Looks to run past the St. Albans defence. But it's picked off efficiently and Michael Gergic will bring it forward. Nicolaitis rolls it back to Theodoropoulos. Now it's Fella inside of the centre circle. Looks left and finds Nicolaitis. Now it's Fella again. Back to Theodoropoulos. And uh, St Albans, they've come out firing in the second half, but a lot of work to do in those attacking areas. It's Habib. And subsequently cleared away by St Albans. Now it's Zara. And Nazari. High ball. Zara couldn't get the touch away. And it's back into the Heidelberg defence. Fella in short. Crosses halfway. Beats several defenders and plays it down to the right-hand channel. They go right yet again. Now it's Monarch and now Timmins coming in strongly. Rolls it in short for Nazari. Now it's picked off and St. Albans will earn themselves a throw-in. Interesting to see how St. Albans come out in the uh, opening 10 minutes of this game. Uh, they're going to try to frustrate Heidelberg, not allow them to play that usual game, moving it around. Just going to use that stop start and uh, just get them rattled a little bit. And as you, as Michael Grigic did, at a set play, I think that's where they'll c really put the pressure on and try to get a goal. But at the moment, Heidelberg need to get that second goal. They had a big chance with a penalty save. Now they've got to come out in the second half as they switch it out wide to pin. Don't they need him to fire up tonight? Overlapping run. Cross comes in. It's dealt with. They get it back again. Another cross into the box. Brought down. And Heidelberg maintained possession here. Shepard with the no-look pass there. A la Firmino as they get it back to... All the way back to defence. So Heidelberg retaining possession here. Not allowed St. Albans to get a touch of the ball. Better Hadjik whips it out wide, looking for Habib. And offside flags raised. St. Albans eager to play quickly. Now it's Athiu back to goal. Find space to run in. Plays out to the right hand side for Habib. A nice little neat step over. Looking to roll it square back to the path of Kenny Athiu. Heidelberg pressing. And looking to usher men forward. Better Hadjic. Shepard looks left, finds pin. Isolated with his marker. Rolls it back to Nicolaitis. And St. Albans ensuring that he's pegged back. Pin. And the misplaced pass from Theodoropoulos. Gugic looking to roll it across the center circle. We've picked up on that right hand side by the Burgers. 
He's going to cut it onto his right foot. He's still going to strike away, but it's into the palms of Mati. Yeah, that was a good shot. Just trying to catch him off guard, and Mati got down low. And Hodelberg players were surrounding him, hoping that it would just bobble out for an easy tap-in, but Mati grabbed that one as if his life depended on it, and he sends the ball forward. And once again, just careless in position as Sorobin's now pushed forward here. Is this the moment? And I'm not able to control it as Fedahadji clears Grigic, the captain. And switch it out wide to the left-hand side. Monaic whips it across, and Hayden Brown makes sure that one is safe hands. So Sorobin's pushing forward a lot quicker this time in the second half, Neil. Usually they'll play the slow ball out. Now going more direct. As now Heidelberg send it up forward. Ship at the target. Grigic now. Monaic looks for the line. And it's an awkward clearance there, but it falls away now over to the right hand side. Lovely ball into the box. Back heel. Shot comes in. Good save by Brown. And it's going to be a foul for Sorobins. Play on quickly here. Sorobins look to move it into the box. No one home. Eventually cleared. And Sorobins are up and about, Neil. That's three chances so far in his half. Really putting the pressure on, on Heidelberg. Daniel Fabrizio, very lively in his opening few minutes in the second half. Strong challenge on the edge of the area against Heidelberg United. And we'll see another set piece. And Michael Gugic, <laughs> can he make it two from two? Who knows? It was from almost the exact same position in the first half. Of course, on the other side of the park. But I believe it was more to the left of the goal. Well, Neil, if this goes in, he'll be a hero. As you said, he doesn't score many goals. But when he does, he makes them count. And this could be a big moment again here in this game. He has got runners available for the cross should he decide to do so. It's quite an obtuse angle, so you might think he will look for the cross this time as opposed to the direct opportunity. It is Michael Gugic yet again for St. Albans. He goes direct again. It's just over the bar. Very easy for Hayden Brown. Well, he went for it. And he just had a bit too much height. And I'm sure that would have been a heart in the mouth stuff if you're a Heidelberg fan. But it hasn't come off in the end. But this is a very good start here from Dinamo. They come out and attacked early in the second half. They're pushing for that second goal. Heidelberg need to be careful. Brown to bring it back into play. Far side. What has Heidelberg got in the tank here? Lovely turn. Ball out wide over a lapping run. Habib. Oh, challenge from behind. And it'll be a free kick. You see Bilal Habib just scoring a bit frustrated on that far side. Still 1 0 in Shepparton as Goulburn Valley look to book their place into the next round of the Australia Cup. National rounds at that. That community must be absolutely buzzing. Well, they're 30 minutes away, Neil. What a moment this would be. We'll keep you up to date and more across the evening. As now. Gabriel Marti will take the set piece. And watches it long. Backwards header from Fala. And a free kick awarded to St. Albans. It's more in a central area, however. And you certainly aren't going to go direct from this angle. They've come out of the blocks better than Heidelberg, that's for sure. And Goulburn Valley have scored their second of the evening to make it 2-0 
all but ensuring their progression into the national rounds. This is a story in fold, unfolding right in front of your eyes here. But Joey Monarch for St. Albans now. Towards a back stick. It arrives. Oh, the header is slightly wayward, although it's still in play for Fabrizio with a back heel, which finds the head of Kenny Athew. And now Heidelberg will look to spring a counter-attack going forward. St. Albans doing the defensive work. Nicolades imposing himself physically. Now roll it square. Zari playing it in to the area, but Heidelberg United able to pick off the pass. Zach Thomas shouldering the ball down. Not deemed to be a handball, according to head referee <laughs> Adam Bavka. Thomas overlapping, looking to get the cross away, but a sliding effort did arrive from Josh Pinn, which leads to the corner kick. Yeah, good work there from Zach Thomas. Running deep from right back is... Uh, Really making a solid effort now. Another chance here for St. Albans as Monet comes around, They're whipping across, and danger times here for Heidelberg. They can't afford to concede here. Now, all arrive for St. Albans. It's towards a near post, it's headed back by the Burgers. But Zelfi Nazari with too much purchase on that effort. Thrown down the line by Heidelberg United. Gurgic. The two goal scorers getting in a bit of a tussle there. Sean Timmons receiving in board, of course, formerly of Redditch United. Had three appearances for the Wellington Phoenix in 2014. Also played for Ireland's youth teams, including the under-19s. Also a well-tenured player across the state as well. For the likes of South Melbourne, Green Gully, Dandong City. It's been a good inclusion for them. They did lose Nikola Djurkovic to North Geelong, so good inclusion in that centre back position with Dib. And that'll be a free kick for Heidelberg. Now, in the middle of the park here. Well, Neil, we've almost played 10 minutes here and Heidelberg just haven't looked the same as they were in the first half. George Kasakis might need to make a change, I reckon, in the next five minutes. Otherwise, the longer this game goes, the more it favours St. Albans. I'd have to agree with you on that occasion. The set piece arrives into the area. Mati gets his fingertips to it. Might it fall for Bilal Habib. He leaves it short for Kane Shepard to poke it home. Heidelberg's son, yet again, it's a masterstroke. And Heidelberg United are edging ever so closer to the national stages. As he's done so in this very competition, in the preliminary rounds, Kane Shepard gets on the score sheet. Well, he made up for that penalty miss earlier on in the first half and... Kane Shepard was there to tap it away. Gabriel Marti came out. He squatted it away, but in that challenge, he did go down and left his goals open. And now Heidelberg are in the box seat. Straubens now need to respond. And Gabriel Marti does not look good. It seems at that end, the keepers aren't doing too well. Could it be that Karanovic needs to come on now? Time will tell, but that's a good response there from Heidelberg. They're under the pump in the first 10 minutes of his second half. Robbins were pushing him real hard, real deep, and out of nothing, they've managed to secure a goal, so good result there. Now it's Dinamo's turn to respond. They've dug deep, the Burgers. Under a lot of duress, this campaign, within their league form, George Katsakis was questioned at various points. The job is not done yet, however. Ryan McGuffey's team have got a lot in the tank. And they've shown that in his opening 15 minutes of this second half. Gabriel Marti, after becoming the hero in that first half, has been reduced 
in that instance. Unable to get his full body behind the ball. And a costly error, it might seem. Has put St. Albans in a very difficult position. As Heidelberg, with that extra momentum, will look to press. Nazari's pegged back. So too is Timmins. Now it's Marty. Of course, formerly of Northcote City. Yeah, Marty. Came in for Jasko Karanovic, who was red carded against the Dandenong Thunder several weeks ago. And done quite well tonight, despite acrimonious circumstances. Yeah, he's uh, definitely still tall. Uh, they're not out of this game. Half an hour left to play. And St. Albans, you never know when they can sneak a result as they go the long throw. Headed down. Cleared by Kenny Ball. Back into the box. No offside flag, eventually it's called. So, Heidelberg survived a scare. Now it's about time management for Heidelberg. They'll try to slow the game down as much as they can, play it on their terms. They know Sorobans need to come out and attack. They've got to be too, not too relaxed, though, as Dinamore can hit him on the counter. What will Ryan McGuffey do? He's got 30 minutes to salvage something here. Will he make a big call? As headed the way by Dunn. And there'll be another throw in for Heidelberg. Well, you do have some artillery on the bench, we have to say. Yanni Panakos arriving last week from Western United's Youth Academy. Brian Summerskill as well. A number of talented players on the bench. Yeah. St. Albans. We've got Aaron Opadisano, who's uh, usually a floating wing back defender. He can uh, make those deep runs. So, plenty of attack. It's up to McGuffey now as Monaik just gets whatever he can. Flicked on by Kenny. Finds pin here. Pin now. Maybe overhit it. He gets it back again. Eventually cleared by St. Albans. And Timmins now plays a ball. In turnover again, and it'll be a free kick for Dinamo. So Joshua pin there. Just couldn't get the ball under control. As the Robins now look for answers. They send it forward. Done the target. Two to beat. Fedahadjik comes in. And I'll get a throw in for Heidelberg. Thirty minutes for Heidelberg to seal their fate. But for St Albans, it's thirty minutes to force an equaliser and potentially extra time or a winner. Alternatively, Thomas heads over the top. Gurgic attempted to muscle his way through. Now Zara almost left a path for Bilal Habib to run in. It's end-to-end -end stuff now. You know, it's with Ryan Zouet on this left-hand channel. Looking to beat past Theodoropoulos. But Zouet committing himself a little bit too much. And the free kick awarded to Heidelberg United. Heidelberg now to bring it in from the free kick. Happy to take their time in this one. They're in the box seat here. They are almost 20 minutes away from, oh sorry, more than 20 minutes now. Moving on to the next stage, the national stage, as they make a substitution here. So Kane Shepard, their marksman, who might have scored the all-important goal. He's replaced by a fellow Englishman in Owen Ashton. Of course, has come back from a significant 
setback, of course, uh, in which it was actually in one of the previous rounds against Kingston City. Yep, round five. Thankfully, he's all good and all okay. And he's back playing football, the former West Bromwich Albion midfielder. And he did score on the weekend as well against this very side. So, a potential nightmare for St. Albans to contend with yet again. Now it's out with Pin on this left-hand side. Running onto his right foot, looking to get the cross inside, but it's headed away by Gurgic. It's Zara, finds out for you. And St. Albans clear their lines. Now in the middle is Fabrizio. Forced to go left. Now it's Habib. He's been muscled down by Zwerd. And I'm surprised Ma Ryan McGuffey has not gone to his bench. Considering Heidelberg have only got one substitution window left. You might think that St. Albans are banking on a pot potential equaliser and conserving their substitutes uh, for, for these final 25 minutes, perhaps? I'm not sure. Maybe, Neil. Maybe you might, might wait to the 70th minute and really go out all guns blazing and just attack as first cross comes in. It's hit it. Yeah, on chance, and it's a goal. And that's three for Heidelberg. And Alexandros faithful are up in arms, and that might have killed off the game. Although something has occurred here, Neil. I don't think it's a goal. It's Josh Pinn who managed to score, but it has been ruled off. I think due to a handball. So a lifeline perhaps <laughs> for Dinamo. The two number 17s going at it, Fabrizio and Pin. The disallowed goal scorer this evening. Now it's Fala. Looking to loft it over the top. Timmons in a foot race with Athiu. Now it's Pin. Ashton. Centrally for Athiu. Neatly puts a ball out to the right hand side. Looking to fall for Habib. But Joey Monarch did extremely well, but Habib did regain possession. Nice little neat feint. Finds Ashton in the penalty area. Looking to get the shot away. Habib goes to ground. Not deemed to be discretionary by Adam Babka. And now Timmons. It's been an action-packed second half. And uh, all that, that call, do you agree with that, Alex? Oh, look, it's... Uh, we couldn't probably see it from here, but we'll trust the judgment of the referee. But that's a... That's a good chance here now for Dinamo. They've received another lifeline. Could, they need to take advantage of it now. They've started off well in his second half, but it just sort of, the light has just sort of flamed out a little bit here. They need to get their heads back in the game. See if they can somehow get another goal, and that really will put the pressure back on Heidelberg. But Heidelberg doing everything they can now to stay in front as they send it forward again. King Kenny to target, headed away by Dib. Dinamo now having to defend again. Grigic battling with Pin. Sea of legs there. Eventually falls away. Good work here from the skipper. And it's going to be a free kick for Heidelberg. And you can tell the fans aren't happy with that one. And it's another free kick, another opportunity now for Heidelberg deep in their attacking half. So it will be Owen Ashton to send this in. Well, it was almost like a rugby scrum <laughs> on the deck. But it did fall out and eventually Heidelberg United are granted the free kick. Ashton, it's curling. But it's Cleared away by Dinamo. Not as far as they would have liked. As Heidelberg looked to play it down the line. It looks to bob up centrally for Lathan Dunn. Who has Marshall all the way forward and forced a Heidelberg United turnover. And Zelfi Nazari will be very eager to throw this in. Now it's Dib. The intended target was Kalina. 
But a goal kick will arrive for the Burgers. Any other game, Neil? Goldman Valley are 15 minutes away from a big, big victory. Moving on to the Nationals, the second stage. Australia Cup. Aiden Brown being told to hurry along here. Adam Bafka knows what's happening. He wants the, the game to continue. Brown now to bring it in. A push over to the far side where the coaches are. Grigic heads it away. Flicked on by Dunn. Hot ball at the moment. Heidelberg deep in defence. They somehow managed to get it back. Habib just shoved his way and that'll be a free kick for Dinamo. They want to move it along quickly now. And it'll be a throw in. Left hand side wing of the Olympic Village here. It's been, it's been a very entertaining game, Neil. We've got 20 minutes left to go. And Ryan McGuffey still hasn't made a change. Very intriguing to observe. The cross coming in. Might have yet fall for Dunn. It nearly did. And now Thomas with the back heel. The dib wasn't there to arrive. And Heidelberg United add themselves a very enticing counter-attacking opportunity. It's Nicolaitis. Pin arrives. Gets a cross away into the middle of the area. And it's Kenny Athew who swung at it. With the miscue. It's Ashton. All the way clear. And Thomas manages to head down. Now it's picked up by Dunn. Who touches Erend. And those famous chants of Alexandros. Uh well and truly heating up as uh, the home, fi home fan sides look to spur their team towards victory. Nicolaitis in short is Athew. Timmons. Swed. Monarch. Theodoropoulos picked off by Fabrizio. Zwed looking to turn his way to receive in board. But Heidelberg United went out on the throw in. Path was free for Habib to run in. And he was clipped. We'll see another set piece for the Burgers. Yeah, another big opportunity now. Heidelberg have it in there attacking half. It's a good chance here for whipping a good ball in. Habib just shaking that tackle off. Let's just hope it's not another injury for Heidelberg. As we said, they've got a couple of big games coming up. Sean, Sean Ellis, of course, yeah. also out as well. Big moment here for Dinamo. It is Owen Ashton. Who arrives and a header over the top. From, I believe, Aiden Fedahadic. And we'll see a St. Albans goal kick. It's almost approaching. Roll of the dice areas for the away side. Yeah, it looks like Ryan McGuffey's going to make some changes in the next couple of minutes as uh, two players uh, got their warm-up bibs off. So... Maybe he's going to throw everything in the kitchen sink at it in the last 15 minutes here. Trying to s snatch a result and force it into extra time or shove in the back there. Referee Adam Babka finally calls it. I'm not sure I agree if the fans there. They'll definitely have shove there. This chance comes in for Dinamo. Cross comes in. It's flicked on. Unable to bring it down. It's Fabrizio. And Nicolaitis now. Can clean up in the back here. He sends a ball forward. King Kenny heads it down. Finds chance here. Holderberg push forward for an equalizer. Lines it up, hits it at the back. Oh! <laughs> Almost knocking himself out there.
gets a round of applause from the home fans, but uh, King Kenny might have just concussed himself, but he's not looking too good there. I think it was a makeshift scorpion kick, <laughs> and he's actually gone to deck. I think he might need some treatment here. You can't help but have a little bit of a chuckle, but if it is an injury concern, it, it's something not to not, not something not to uh, be too uh, too happy with. I'm sure George Kasakis uh, will be just shaking his head at that one, at the amount of injuries his team have had, and to. Uh, player injures himself on that occasion uh, King Kenny trying to do the audacious but uh, substitution now for looks like for Dinamo uh, so they'll take two players off so it looks to be Zelfi Nazari making way for Brian Summerskill looks like Ivan Razumic as well coming on and Ivan Razumic also will come on for Lathan Dunn. And the other game, still 2 0. Golden Valley Suns hitting into the 84th minute there. So they are very close to moving to the national stage. What a moment that is for that club, for that region, to be on a, playing in the in the big time on the national stage potentially. Kenny Athiu is all good to come back in. <laughs> of course, this is Ivan Razumic who's come on, a long tenure player of this football club, only 21 years old. However, as a header comes in the near post, it was Owen Ashton who imposed himself. Now Fabrizio looking to. Finds his way forward, but it's Murakami does well. Athiu again, surely not. Mutti with an outstretched save. Excellent work from Dinamo's goalkeeper. Kenny Athiu finding a pocket of space to run in yet again. So now Gugic goes to ground. Bavkar deems no foul. As uh, Christopher Dib, if I'm not mistaken, has gone to deck. And with this fixture congestion, uh, you are not surprised to see players going down with some slight cramp, which this is what it seems to be. Yeah, Nicholas Deep, hard-nosed defender, doesn't go down too often, so you know when he does go down, it's something serious. He's back on his feet, which is good to see. And Hardberg will get the ball back. Feta Hadjik looks to push it forward. Nicolaitis. That's going to be a late challenge there by Ivan Razumic. He's come on and he'll get a yellow card for that challenge. So Nicolaitis now on the ground. Gets back on his feet gingerly, which is a positive sign. Well, Sir Ormans, 13 minutes left to go. What did they have in the tank? Have they got something there for him? Or will Heidelberg come away with it? Better had you just waiting. Send it forward. Gets it into the box. King Kenny the target. This time heads it down. And it will be a goal kick. Gabriel Marti making a big, big save in the second half. Sends it forward. Flicked on by Grigic. Heidelberg win it back. Feta Hadjik sends it forward. High ball. He'll get it back again. Sends another high ball up in the air. Pin the target. Mistimed the challenge. Dinamo send it forward. Chance here to step over. Lovely work. Challenge came through and it's going to be a free kick going in the way of Heidelberg. I'm not sure what, it, what that was for, Neil. But 
Just looking at the replay here. I think it was a push to the arm from Daniel Fabrizio, which Could be, yeah. the assistant referee deemed to be High discretionary contact. enough for... Well, I shouldn't say discretionary. It should be... Well, it was uh, of uh, justification to award the free kick. Only three minutes remain in Goblin Valley's clash against Hume City as they look to get themselves into the national stage. Oh. Oh, it'll be given the hurry along here. Ten minutes remaining for them. Can they hold on? They've been quite a resolute defensive bunch this second half. But I must say, this game has been very stop-start. Yes, the, the St. Auburn's way, they like to play that frustrating type of football where they don't allow teams to play the usual possession style. We know Heidelberg like to move it around, retain possession at the moment. Playing into St. Auburn's way. It looks like Fitter Hadjik is going to come off here. He's not sure. Maybe it's a contact lens, I think, Neil. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that on a football pitch. It says, uh, <laughs> I thought it was blood rule initially. But yeah, that's what I thought. So It uh, seems to be contact lenses, so there you go. King Kenny brings it down. They push forward now through pin. Overlapping run from Nicolades. Chose to ignore him, squares it into the box. Heidelberg now turn their attention into defence. Summerskill turns, turns again. Switches it out wide and miss both players. Former Heidelberg player. So Dion Nicolaitis to throw this in just inside Heidelberg's half. Fans giving voice as Pin losses it towards the back post. Only as far as Bilal Habib. Nice little neat rollover and into play with Owen Ashton. And St. Albans head at central. Summer skill. Pushes it out to the right hand side. Fedor Hadjik doing well and getting it clear. Now it's two balls in the park. Hardwick fan just. <laughs> Footy kicking it onto the park as Flying Summer Skill goes to deck. Well, they had to make up for that missed kick. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> and, and, he, and he did. Now Fabrizio. On the right hand touch line. Find space for Razumich. St. Albans are going to throw all their men forward. Poke clear again. Now Zach Thomas. Into stoppage time in the other game now, Neil. Not long to go there. Still got time in this one. As they go forward, King Kenny now has runners to his right. Habib cuts in. Still going now. Twisting, turning, trying to find something. They push it wide further. On Heidelberg. We'll get a throw in. St. Auburn's left about seven minutes left to go. Will they find something? Or will Heidelberg hold on? Lovely turn. Habib trying to get a shot off here. Gets past his marker. Still going. Eventually cleared by Dinamo. Only far as Nicolaitis. And then he'll throw it in. Nicolaitis now. He's really grown in confidence over the last couple of matches. Making that left back spot his own. Athew. Breaking away past Zach Thomas. But a challenge did arrive from the former Maitland FC defender. Goblin Valley on the precipice of creating history.
as we'll see a long throw in arrive from the burgers players marshaled forward but <laughs> not as many as you'd expect that they did in the first half it's pinned it's batted away it's still in the area though of St Albans it's wet St Albans looking across it past halfway but excellent defensive awareness from Heidelberg United Nice little flick on, on that left-hand side, but it's poked away by St. Albans for Huddleberg throw. Craig Carley and his legacy at Guelburn Valley. Sh should they hold this 2-0 scoreline, will send shockwaves across Victorian and Australian football. The definition of a cup set. Marty. Yet again, Gurgic. St. Albans, not much urgency going forward, but now it's with Dib. Looks long. Out to the right-hand side is Razumic. Bit of Hajik doing well. Shoulder the challenge. And send it on to the top of the stand. Here at the Olympic Village. And I think just to... <laughs> Save some time. Heidelberg United will also bring on two changes just to ensure that St. Albans are afforded as minimal time as possible. Thomas did with a backwards header. Still in the area. The strike doesn't thrive from College, but the free kick was awarded before that strike from Anna Bavka. As now, Dom Fowler will make way for Danny Dixon. He will ride from Hume City last season. We know the battles that he's been faced with, and it's great to see him playing football consistently. Also coming on for Heidelberg United, Matthew Salakides making way for Josh Pinn. Salakides, a Heidelberg youth product as well. So George Kasakis just shoring up his defence now. As we head into the last five minutes of this game, wants to make sure it doesn't allow Dinamo to get a sniff. Hayden Brown to bring it back into play now. It goes high, camera side. Grigic sends it back, high ball. Head of the way, it'll be a throw in for Dinamo. Thomas once again goes short, summer skill turns. Puts a ball into the box, brought down. Shot chance. Oh, it's a finish, and it's 2 2. Would you believe it, Neil? St. Albans have equalised and quite possibly have broken Hodelberg's heart here. Mordswed, take a bow, my son. What an absolute screamer. And what a way to do it. His story, marred by knee injuries in his career. Ventured into esports and has now delivered on the pitch. What a stunning turn of events. Ryan McGuffey's men are almost certainly going to send this into extra time. It is unfathomable. Well, if there's one way to silence the home crowd, it's score in the 88th minute. And now the pressure goes back to Heidelberg as they go forward again. Puts a ball into the box, head of the way. Nicolaitis will be a throw in for Heidelberg. Wow, Neil, another twist in this game. Nicolaitis. Now it's summer skill. Zara wins it back. Look at the tussle his way through past summer skill. It's poked back into the penalty area, but it's lashed clear by St. Albans. As Goulburn Valley have booked their spot into the national rounds. The 2-0 win confirmed over Hume City. Scores level here at the village. 
as we look to approach extra time and also stoppage time. Matthew back to goal, looking to wrestle his way past the St. Albans defense, but it falls now for Dion Nicolaitis. It's summer skill. Nicolaitis beating his first man. It's into the area. The danger not yet adverted for St. Albans, but now it is so. Dixon. It's into the chest of Zwed. And Matthew just bats that away. The flick on. Now to Ashton. It's short for Zara. Five minutes of added time. The cross coming into the area. It's Athiu. Might have yet fall for Habib. There's still a space in the penalty area. Crosses it in, but it's Gabriel Marti who gets down to it. And it was almost a victory lap for the Heidelberg United home fans singing their trademark tunes. But now St. Albans have got all the momentum with a yellow card to be awarded. On the counter-attack, and a very dangerous set-piece opportunity as well. Going into the book is Owen Ashton. Wow. Lost for words, Alex. This we is scintillating stuff. That's why they call it the magic of the cup. we got plenty of time. Five minutes left here, and now Dinamo have a chance at a goal. Could they seal it here in this chance here? Grigic again over the ball. He'll look to go to goal. The rain falls here. In fact, it actually is Brian Summerskill. Gugic is in the box. Well, he might get on the end of it. Summerskill oh, goes short. Fabrizio back to goal. Hugs it back out to Summerskill with a curling effort. Oh. It's saved by Brown. Fedahadzic gets it clear. And now Heidelberg will look to swing forward. Zara turning away from his marker. Finds the run of... Bilal Habib, but tracking back effectively was Sean Timmons. Now it's cleared away by Marty. Nicolaitis. Dixon, cutting onto his right, and earning his side the free kick. Well, no, this is not what George Kasakis wanted. He wanted this game wrapped up in 90 minutes with no injuries. Unfortunately, Nick Errors had to be substituted, and now they look like it might go into that dreaded extra time. He's got a big game to think about now. He's got Oakley this Friday, South Melbourne the week after. This is a big, big couple of minutes here as we've played almost two minutes. They send it forward, head it down. Dinamo just send it forward wherever they can. Oh, what, a, what a turn of events here at Olympic Village, Neil. Dinamo looked dead and buried and up in the 88th minute. Moad Zwed stepped up to the challenge as they send it forward again. Now Habib looks to go one on one. Shimmy shakes, hits it. Oh. Just wide. And it'll be a corner. Another chance here, Neil, for Heidelberg. Well, we were thinking that Ryan McGuffey <laughs> might look to stoppage time and extra time to make his substitutions just in case there's a possibility that extra time could arise. Now towards the back post. The header arrives. Money in full. Oh. It's the crossbar. In fact, it hit the post. I do not believe it. It's still into the area. And Zara sends it over the bar. Wow. That is unbelievable. Inches away from giving him a winner. This game is just unbelievable, Neil. With pressure, both these sides are on. A chance to go to the national stage. Gabriel Marti, there's only about a minute left of this stoppage time period. But who will prevail? Athiu, beating his man, finds Habib, but it's picked off effectively by Thomas. But Michael Gurgic committed the foul. And just about every Heidelberg player is going to enter that 18-yard box. Well, not everyone, but all players are certainly <laughs> across halfway. Well, it's all or nothing now. Final minute of the game to go before we go to stop extra time. 
Owen Ashton. What a story this would be if he could be the impetus behind this. Ashton. Can he get to you? Oh. The script was nearly written for King Kenny to score a last minute stoppage time goal to put Heidelberg 3-2 up. Well, he rose like a gazelle and he just did it wide. What a moment that was. King Kenny to put his name in glory. And now... We are 20 seconds away. That is it. The full-time whistle sounds. We're going to stoppage time, Neil. This is a big, big moment in this game now. You feel now that St. Albans will fancy themselves. Heidelberg, well, they were a couple of minutes away from a big, big victory. Could we go to penalties even, Neil? The fight and desire these two teams have displayed this evening has been nothing short of remarkable, outstanding, and inspiring as well. It is extremely unfortunate that these sides aren't able to settle it in the 90 for their sakes, but for <laughs> us and for all those watching on the broadcast, it is a cup night special. And some Heidelberg fans are looking to just get themselves a bit of a break. Look, we'll be back right after this, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go away. Grab yourself a drink and snacks. Plenty of football still left to come. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to the Australia Cup Victorian Round 7 Preliminary Rounds. It is extra time in what will be the season-defining clash for these both sides in many respects. Heidelberg can clinch their destiny to reach the final rounds for the second year in a row whilst for St. Albans history of their own kind reaching the, the final rounds for the first time since 2014 these next 30 minutes will be a demonstration of desire grit determination and resilience 
but who will prevail? The first 90 minutes saw goals from Kenny Athiu, Michael Gurgic, Kane Shepard, and Moaz Wed in the 88th minute. And that's why we have extra time this evening here at the Village. It will be a late one, but it's one certainly to look forward to. I'm joined on commentary by Alex Sivkarovsky for this second, well, for this first period of extra time. This game has really provided everything. It's an encapsulation of Victorian football and cup football, I might add. How will this plan out? Well, Neil, time will tell. Uh, St. Albans have two extra players on the bench, so they're looking quite good. But Heidelberg now, they're in a, in a spot of bother. They can't make any more substitutions. And really, Neil, they were two minutes away you would think from a big, big victory, Moad Zwed had other ideas. So Heidelberg now need to just come away with this, get the early goal, control the tempo for the next half hour, not try to use too much energy because they've got a big game against Oakley Cannons this Friday. Their season is on the line here. And you feel like if they lose here tonight, yeah, questions will be asked whether you know they are good enough. So time will tell. Ryan McGuffey has a few aces up his sleeve. Will he pull the trigger first in the first half or second half? Time will tell. It's going to be a great game of football, Neil. I cannot wait. Hardaway United have utilized all of their substitution windows, so they will not be able to make any more changes. In fact, they will. I think they've got one extra one for, sec for extra time, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken. So they do have that slight reprieve, but it will be very difficult for them to edge themselves going forward with tied legs on the park. Thomas Jankovic, the final player that Heidelberg United can utilize. The youngster. Now it's for Athiu. Looks towards Ashton. He touches it down. And goes high. Headed back by St. Albans, but it'll be a throw for Heidelberg just inside of their attacking half. Now it's Dixon. His former side, Hume City, falling to Goulburn Valley Suns in the final preliminary round. A cup set, considering Goulburn Valley are MPL 3 standard. If Athiu. He's passed Habib slightly with too much vigor and energy. We see a St. Albans throw in on the far side. As the uh, fog starts to set in here now at Olympic Village, uh, Hush goes over the crowd, the home fans are shell shocked. They fought they were done, they fought they were home and hosed. And now they've got another 30 minutes of football to go. That's if we get a result. Heidelberg got to pull something out of the bag. George Kasakis, in his many years of experience, needs to rally his troops one more time as they push forward. Now Dinamore, ball into the middle, overlapping run. We'll try to look for that through ball, but defending well was Heidelberg. And they'll get a chance at a throw in. So it's going to be Dinamore's way. So Dinamore will look to come out and attack early in this extra time period. Fans, as we said, are in, stunned in silence. They thought their team was home and hosed. They go to the corner flag. And it will be a corner for Dinamore. Well, Hayden Brown been called upon. The next half hour will be a big, big moment for him. He's going to be pushing hard to keep Dinamore out of this. Can he be the hero? For him, as St. Albans now whipping across its high ball, looking to the back post, headed down just wide again. It's another corner. So Heidelberg now on the back foot. Another corner here. Can, can Dinamo surprise 
Arlberg here as the cross awaits. Cross comes in, near post head of the end, cleared away, not out of trouble yet. And it'll be a free kick for Heidelberg. So a pre a reprieve there for Heidelberg now. And they can get the ball back into play. Hayden Brown will bring it in for another chance for Heidelberg to attack. it up field. Oh, it's bouncing off. Cleared by Zach Thomas. Brown will get it back again. Quick release. Heidelberg now really pushing forward. Kenny was a target. They turn it over as wet. Challenge referee deemed legal. They've come away with it now. Heidelberg, can they push forward? Running hard here. Kenny wants it in the middle. The cross comes in. Just a bit too high. It's bounced off. Still in play. Falls, clears by Thomas. Shot comes in. And that one's gone into the canteen. Well, what a turn of events that was there. Heidelberg. Whipping the ball into the box. Just couldn't find someone there. So... According to my understanding of the regulations, Hunterberg United aren't able to make any more changes because those five players have come on the park within the 90 minutes. Yep. So thereby, they can't make any changes. That's huge. That is huge. So if they had made four changes, if Nick Ares did not go down with his injury, Thomas Jankovic might have been able to come onto the park, but that is not the case. Unfortunately for him, the ball's played down the line to Zara. Nice little nip flick on to find Salakidis. Now it's in the middle for Danny Dixon. And drive through on the park and switch it out left to find Bilal Habib. A couple of step overs cutting onto his right. Finding his way through, he goes to ground. Adam Babkar deems no foul on that occasion. Driving to the area. Still. Is Nicolaides and he, St Albans seat out for a goal kick. There's a lot of smoke on, on, on the pitch. <laughs> yeah, it's Alex. Uh, I, I think that might be from the canteen here. Yeah, I, I, I think it is. There is a I'd, be, I'd be very concerned if it wasn't the case. No, it definitely is. A, there's a lake behind the ground, and uh, it's just making conditions that. Extra difficult for the players, especially for St. Albans. Gabriel Marti now to bring it back into play. We've made seven minutes of added extra time here. So for your reference, up to a maximum of five players, including a goalkeeper, maybe replace it one of the three permitted substitution opportunities after the conclusion of normal playing time. Time lost or extra time. So in the event a team uses all the five substitutes during the 90 minutes, no further substitutions are possible. So Heidelberg United have been placed in a very tough predicament going forward. And Salakidis is brought to ground. That time by Daniel Fabrizio. Yes, it's going to be a big, big moment here for Heidelberg. They've got to dig deep. Anything can happen. They can score one or two quick goals and finish off the game. There's King Kenny, switches it out wide to Habib. Maybe just a bit too much there. Too much vigour on that pass from Kenny Athew, who's had a fantastic game thus far, after coming off the bench for much of the season. Is seemingly going to put in a full 120. But he's still showing signs of life and energy going forward. But for St Albans, they do have those extra changes that they can bring on. Nicolades muscled down by Razumic on that far side. A 
as we approach the final five minutes of this first period of extra time. Ball goes along, headed backwards by St. Albans. We'll see Anthony Theodoropoulos leave a throw in for Shinsuke Murakami. Now it's Murakami again, rolls it back to Zara. <laughs> and it was closed down by Brian Summerskill. Wed. Summer skill. Looks to send it forward. Now it's Gurgic. Theodoropoulos. Launches it forward. Matthew looking for the header, but it's nowhere near to its intended target. Excellent technical awareness from Adrian Zara to muscle his way through. And evade all the challenges and looking to spray a ball out to the left-hand channel. Nicolades. The smoke seems to have <laughs> enveloped the entire pitch now. <laughs> so no, no matter where you look as a player, there's always going to be an extra smoke in space. Now it's Bilal Habib looking to get his way through. And Mbavkar doesn't deem a foul to be awarded. Bilal Habib was clipped inside the penalty area. Matthew coming to do his defensive work. Now it's Danny Dixon. Crossfield ball and he's intercepted by Mard Zwed and leaves space of plenty for St. Albans to work within. Now it's Brian Summerskill cutting onto his right. He's got space to shoot. Summerskill with a curling effort oh. and it's Hayden Brown who darted to his left and made a stunning save, which has kept Heidelberg United in this contest. Brilliant save that one from Hayden Brown. Summerskill cut in, looked to have a looping ball was looking for the left hand side but Hayden Brown making a big big save and I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up but these conditions here Neil very very hard to see it looks like it has it slowly start to move away but now Dinamo have a chance at goal could this be the moment for him the set piece will arrive on the far side it's towards the back post and it's headed back by the Burgers and it'll be another corner for St Albans this time on this near side as the smoke looks to have finally cleared, which is good for the players. Some nervous Heidelberg fans here. Most of them have stood up now and are watching with eager anticipation of what might come next. It's Brian Summerskill on this near side to send us in. Was a back stick again. It's Gurgic with the header. But Habib will pick up for the home side. Ashton is running forwards. But however, tracking back is Joey Monek. Looking to find a path for Razumic to run within. But Nicolaitis slid in effectively. Nicolaitis, couple of step overs. Picked off by St. Albans yet again. And now Gurgic finding Zwed. He looks to spray it out to the right hand side. It's intercepted by Feder Haric. Now it's Habib. Slightly over the head of the winger. And he'll be out for a throw in on the far side. St. Albans now to bring it back in. Tense moments here at Olympic Village as we're almost wrapping up. First half of extra time. First chance really going to Dinamo through summer skill. If it wasn't for Brown, he made a brilliant save as Dinamo sent it forward. Summer skill brought it down. Zara's there to clean up through Feta Hadjik now. Feta Hadjik sends it forward. High ball. Habib mistiming that one. Nicolades heads it back. Habib brings it down. Step over. 
Sweat clears wide. Now they push forward. Here's Dinamo. Good chase here by Habib. Gets those long legs out. And it'll be a throw in for Dinamo on the right wing. As we play a minute left to go here. St. Albans now. They turn it over. They win it back. Desperate defending here. They send the ball forward into the box. Summer skill the target. He heads it down. And Heidelberg are able to bring it down and clear the safety. Timmons brings it down. Manake overran it. Another chance here. Manake battling hard. Oh, it's a good run here. Falls for Zara now. He pushes forward now. Stops, cuts in. Lovely ball into the middle. Dixon maybe did a bit too much. Still going now. It's twisting and turning. Dixon into the box. Grigic clears it for the line. No penalty. But it will be a corner for Heidelberg. Seems to be no stoppage time added. In this first half of stoppage time, uh, sorry, extra time, should I say. And that was a tantalizing run from Danny Dixon to utilize his body positioning to weave past several defenders. And now you assume the final act of this first half of extra time will arrive with the corner kick on this near side towards the near post. And Adam Babkar blows his whistle. That is the first half of extra time finished. It was a fairly, fairly slow start, but things began to ramp up as we approach the uh, back end. Well, 15 minutes away, Neil. If we don't get a goal, it goes to the dreaded penalties. And at the moment, you look at a Heidelberg, they just seemed a little bit deflated there, Neil. They had the, they're in the cups of being in, going into the next round and unfortunately Moad's weird had other ideas and spoiled their party, forcing this one to go into extra time. So it's a big, big second half of the extra time to come now. And Roy McGuffey has two changes, Neil. Most likely try to throw them on and uh, get those fresh legs on for St. Albans and uh, cause a bit of havoc. Well, if I were the two coaches, I'd begin thinking about who your spot kicks can be. Of course, Aaron Opetisano, Yanni Panakos, the two players that could be brought on for St. Albans. But this is really... the true test of mental fortitude for either side. And I guess conserving energy, you've got very few minutes to do so as these two sides will change over sides, change over areas of the pitch, should I say. It is going to be a tantalizing 15 minutes. Sure, very uh, a lot of Heidelberg fans here at the ground biting their fingernails at the <laughs> prospect of penalties potentially. But nonetheless, we will have a second period of extra time to look forward to. No changes from Ryan McGuffey. So it's all to play for now. Daniel Fabrizio to kick us off. And we're underway. Dib. Onto Kalina. Hustle down by Zara. He wins back possession. Ashton neatly finds Dixon. It's wet with a strong challenge, and in fact, has got all the space to run in on this left-hand channel. Oh. This sl touch is slightly wayward, but he wins oh. back possession. Does Moad's wed driving into the penalty area. He got the shot away, but it was deflected off. And in Fedahadik, he'll be out for a corner on the far side. 
And we talk about resilience <laughs> and what you need going forward. Well, he got a couple of lucky breaks there, Neil, but he didn't give up. And that's the thing that will impress Ryan McGuffey. He didn't give up. He knows what's at stake. He kept pushing forward. Corner was short, taken, crosses it into the box, headed away by Brown. And it'll be a foul on Hayden Brown there. They can't afford to have another keeper off, Neil. Otherwise, I'm not sure who out of the starting lineup can be a keeper. So Hayden Brown has got to be a protected species if you're a defender. You've got to make sure that he, no one gets near him. I would have to agree with you. Hayden Brown, of course, brought in in that second half for Nick, in that first half for Nick Errors who suffered a head injury. As Ashton locks it over the top, looking for the path of Kenny Athew. But Gabriel Marti will make it all too easy. Some Heidelberg juniors or some Heidelberg ball boys and made their <laughs> way onto the park. I wonder what this is for. Might it be for an impending penalty shootout? Who knows? A sign of things to come, perhaps, as Marti launches this, launches this forward. Now it's into the feet of summer skill. Oh, dangerous. Marty's had to come out of his box, and it's Athey who was lurking. You can't get sloppy at the back in these moments. Especially like that. Summer skill was lucky. Matty was awake, almost committing a sin there. As now Hodelberg go forward, clean tackle. Thomas gets around one challenge. Summer skill again. Now they push forward. The target will be straight to the opposition and Holderberg now clear to safety well nervous moments in the beginning of this second half Neil of extra time what has Ryan McGuffey got up his sleeve he's got two players he can bring on George Kasakis can't bring anyone on they've got to go and hope for penalties or at least try to score a goal and hope that St Albans don't come back this is a big, big couple of minutes here. And you have to ensure that you don't leave gaping holes open in the defence as well on counter-attacking opportunities with tired legs. It brings tired positioning. Now it's Fabrizio looking to loft it into the penalty area, but Heidelberg will look to spring a counter-attack as Dixon looks to find Salakides. He brings it across halfway down that right-hand touch line. And St. Albans did their defensive work. And now it's with Timmons. Across halfway he goes. Summerskill back to goal. Zwed neatly finds Fabrizio on this left-hand side. But it's out of play for a throw-in. Just overheating that one. In. You're right, Neil. Those uh, Heidelberg juniors are acting as ball boys. They want to get the ball back quickly to Heidelberg. Give him all the chance in the world for an, an attacking play. I must say, Brian Summerskill has been an excellent player to bring off the bench, formerly of Heidelberg United in, in recent seasons as well. Would know this pitch very well. Yep. And has delivered, of course, uh, the Englishman. No free kick there. Play on is the call. Heidelberg send it forward. King Kenny's the target. And that'll be a free kick. Going to St. Albans way to the jeers of the home fans. And for all those who have tuned in to this second half of extra time, welcome. And we are on the edge of something truly magnificent. Penalties, perhaps. But nonetheless, this game will live long in the memory for either side. Of course, St. Albans, you really can't believe that they're even in this, in this position, down and out for the first 35 minutes or so in that first half. Could barely stretch it into their own attacking half, but it speaks to the tactical flexibility of Ryan McGuffey to shift things. And eventually, St. Albans are able to get themselves two equalizers. Calls for a foul against Zach Thomas. Waved away by Adam Babka. Now Dixon under some pressure from Michael Gugic. And Gugic 
deviating from position, leaves Ashton in a lot of space. Now it's Habib. Gets it into the area. Bilal Habib! Oh. It hits the crossbar. Athey with the header. It's the crossbar again. Can you believe it? Danny Dixon sends it over the bar. This is insane. Wow. Bilal Habib hit it sweetly. It hits the crossbar. King Kenny hits the crossbar again. Sarumans desperate defending there. And Dixon sent it over. What a chance that was. George Katsakis would have been absolutely pulling his hair out with that one. Two cracks at it and they couldn't get in. Gabriel Marty's gone down, as is Zach Thomas. Wow. What a turn of events, Neil. Do not scratch your eyes. <laughs> what you are seeing is truly extraordinary here. Gabriel Marti has, has seemingly got some sort of injury concern. And it might be cramp for goalkeepers. They spend so much time between the sticks. Spending 120 minutes. Might be a bit too much. And for Gabriel Marti, who also had an injury concern following that Kane Shepherd go-ahead goal in that second half. This could be his night done and dusted. Jasko Karanovic is a very good penalty stopper as well. Well, uh, he has his uh, bib on, so it'll be a brave call from Ryan McGuffey. But you never know. We're back into it now. It looks like Marty's got the all clear, which is great to see. Is there another twist in this story, Neil? The script writers wouldn't have had this in their typology, and tonight it's just been one of those games where they've just thrown out the script as Marty goes forward. High ball. Better had you clears. Headed back by Dib. They hoof it forward here. King Kenny tries to bring it down, battling hard. Not the best clearance from Heidelberg. Sorry. Thomas now just crashes into that one. Flattens the Heidelberg player. And Nicolaitis looks worse for wear there. And you would hate to go to, to 10 men. No, absolutely. Not by your own volition, no, of course. That's right. See on Nicolaitis, that looked extremely tough. Thomas built like a brick house. He just went through him like it was nothing, like a rag doll. And the trainer comes out for another breaking play. Let's just hope he's okay. And Thomas Jankovic is being asked to, to warm up. There might be some some protocol that might allow for another, another substitution, but I'm not entirely sure of the of the regulations in, in this point in time. <laughs> just, throw, <laughs> throw, just throw out the rule book. <laughs> Anything goes now. <laughs> We're seven minutes away. Anything can happen. Anything goes. But it appears that Dion Nicolaitis is all okay. Now he'll look to come on in just a few moments following this stoppage. And in fact, it will be a drop ball. I'm not sure why the both sides were lining up for a free <laughs> kick, but nonetheless, Danny Dixon and... Brian Summerskill will be over this drop ball. Dion Nicolaitis, what a fantastic game he's had. The youngster has been excellent on that left-hand side. More ordering wing back at times as well for George Katsakis' side. They've given it his all as Brown sends it forward. Headed away. Heidelberg now know that time is running out for him. Cleared by Dib. It's flicked on. They send it back again through Fedahadji. King Kenny brings it down. Cleared by Dinamo and as far as Nicolaitis now. Ball out wide to Habib. Habib looks a step over. Whips in across, looking for the back post. Oh, Mati makes the man, and it's a goal! And Heidelberg could possibly have sealed it. Neil Simons, this is unbelievable here. Kenny Athiyu 
Yet again. Who else? He's returned home to where he made his mark in Victoria. And it's a brace for a player who has had to go through tooth and nail through 120 minutes. He scored within the first 10 minutes and he scored within the last five. Well, it looks like the error from Martin might have just clashed with T- Timmons and it just bobbled out and King Kenny puts it away. They're not over yet. they still got a couple of minutes left to go. Can we see another twist in this story? Heartbreak for Dinamo. So we're five minutes away from going to penalties. And, well, could we see another goal, Neil, or will Heidelberg close shop here? Gabriel Marti, so unfortunate. It's two errors that have led to two crucial goals. Were it not for those errors, we, we might be talking about a different side going into the next round. As Matthew Salakides now goes onto the deck. Now the set piece will come for the Burgers. They will try and ensure that they utilize as much time as they can as Kenny goes to deck and will earn his side the free kick and he'll take as much time as he can to get up onto his feet. The Lexos trance back up again and we're quiet for that second half of extra time and that chance by King Kenny could quite possibly have sealed it. Ryan McGuffey makes the change. Daniel Fabrizio has come off oncoming as Yanni Panakos. You know, his second game for St. Albans. He will be tasked with the seemingly impossible one of getting his side an equaliser, formerly of Western United, as mentioned before. Has also played for South Melbourne in the past, scored a goal in the Australia Cup via the penalty spot in 2021. Matthew with the header. Thomas. Shaint clearance. Now it's Habib. We'll draw in space. Last touch came off a St. Albans player to the jeers from Heidelberg United supporters who have been passionate for the, all 120 minutes, Alex. <laughs> I mean, they've never stopped. They come here week in, week out, cheering the boys home, and they'll be happy with this. Obviously, wanted to do it in normal circumstances, but nevertheless, so they're two minutes away from moving into the next round. George Kasakis, I doubt he'll be cool, calm. He'll be nervous watching that clock with every second that goes by. That's another twist in the story here, Neil. A free kick for Dinamo. Could we see another goal here? Gabriel Marti has not come up all the way, but you might suspect that he might do so. If we see another goal, this could bring the house down. <laughs> it wouldn't. It'd be complete silence because uh, St. Albans have not brought too many fans away from the home of Churchill Reserve, but Brian Summerskill will take this set piece. Wow. On a obtuse angle, and it is a very advantageous angle at that. Now in the 120th minute of this contest. Is there another twist? Is there? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> in just a few moments now, it is Brian Summerskill. It's into the area. The header arrives. Although Heidelberg are encouraged to clear. They do so three minutes of at a time. From the fourth official, Puya Gadirian. A couple of skills demonstrated from the Heidelberg United fans here as well as they look to bide their time. And a long throw from St. Albans will arrive from Michael Gurgic, or might they go short? They decide to go long into the area, headed across. 
Razumich. Now Summer School. It's closed down. Comes into the area. It's headed back by the Burgers. Now it's Michael Gergic. Straight effort. It falls inside the penalty area. And Heidelberg United get it forward, but Marty will get there first and lash it forwards. Athews tracking back. Now it's Razumich. Square for Panakos with a good first touch. Now it's Monek. Into the area it goes. Looking to fall for Christopher Dib. But it's lashed clear by Feta Hagish. Gabriel Marti taking the throw in. Home fans want that full time whistle to go here. Shouldn't be too much longer. Waiting with anticipation. It's thrown in now by St. Albans. Only a minute and a half left to bring this to penalties. It's headed back by Dib. Attempted at least. It's Dixon. Cleared away by Heidelberg yet again. Now it's Sean Timmons. Whistling all around the ground. Heidelberg now pressing. Ensuring that St. Albans can't bring a pass halfway. They go long yet again. Do Dynamo. Attempted to be headed by Joey Monek. It falls yet again for Danny Dixon to get it clear. After you back to goal. No foul called against Zach Thomas. In fact, it is. And that might be the final word in this chapter. Adam Babka looks at his clock here. You would say there's not much left here. Cramps here. He's pausing the clock, so he's not going to finish up here, Neil. <laughs> well, we've played almost three minutes of added time in extra time. Adrian Zara. <laughs> the clock has been stopped. Adam Babcock pointing, pointing to his watch. Very eager to get things underway. And where will Zara go? Right to the corner flag. Attempted at least as Thomas. Now to Kalina in a tussle with Bilal Habib. It's Gurgic lofting it forwards. with Dixon, Gugic heads down now it's Panakos looking to weave his way through now it's Dib, across halfway he goes looks left, finds Wed with the attempted overhead kick to the far side I think that might be it Neil that's a full, full time, time here at the village Heidelberg will look to finish the story as they progress into the national rounds of the Australia Cup for the second year in a row. It wasn't easy. It was certainly difficult, but they did it nonetheless. 120 minutes of blood, sweat and tears. But by some stroke of the imagination, St. Albans, for the second time in four days, Fall to the Warriors, but not in the manner that they would have liked. Well, it's a gallant effort by St. Albans. They were a couple minutes away from going to penalties. Unfortunately, Gabriel Matty collided with his centre back and allowed King Kenny to put it away. And Heidelberg, they can breathe a sigh of relief. They're into the next round by the skin of their teeth. And George Kasakis would just be happy that this is over and dusted. They can go, now go into the club rooms and sing that song with gusto. It's been a phenomenal performance from Heidelberg. They had to dig deep. They had no bench in the second half of extra time. 30 minutes with all the players. They've given it all, and they come up trumps. It's been a massive, massive victory for them. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Village. We'll be back next week for more Australia Cup action.
three more clashes in the round of 32. As things currently stand, Goulburn Valley going through. So too are Adelberg United. Thank you very much. No worries, mate. Thank you. Thank you. No, good luck. Take care.